Hello everyone, welcome to a new podcast on women of the Bible. This is your pastor, Yadi. I hope all is well with you out there and let us enjoy a new woman that maybe some out there already heard about or if not, so enjoy and learn from it. The woman is named the Shulamite woman. Her character Here is the only female voice that speaks directly and extensively to us in scripture. Ruth's, Esther's, Hannah's, and Mary's voices, for instance, are all mediated through narration. The Shulamite woman boldly declares her longing and desire to be united to her lover in marriage. Her sorrow to have been separated from her beloved at times, and her joy to enjoy so passionate a love, and the scriptures, the key scripture, it's from the songs of songs 1 to 8. So let's hear about her story. She was young, beautiful, and desirable. He was handsome, strong, an idol, a shepherd or a king who lavished strange praise upon his beloved. He compared the Shulamite woman's hair to a flock of goats running down a mountain slope, her nose to the Tower of Lebanon, and her teeth, each with its twin, to sheep that have just bought it. We smile at such images, but we are fascinated by this beautifully written collection of love songs. And though we know it is not merely some ancient Valentine's Day card, we are not quite certain what to do of make of it. Unlike any other book in the Bible, the Songs of Songs is full of erotic imagery. The Shulamite woman was as passionate as her lover, initiating contact with him, openly declaring her feelings. She yearned for kisses from his mouth, so in love that even his name smelled sweet to her. She wandered the city at night or dreamed of wandering it, searching for him. She wished she could pass him off as her brother, as that she could kiss him publicly without creating a scandal. Each declaration from her elicits a passionate response from her lover, who sang of her. Your stature is like that of a palm, and your breast like clusters of fruit. I said, I will climb the palm tree, I will take hold of its fruits. May your breast be like the clusters of the vine, the fragments of your bread like apples and your mouth like the best wine. Song of Songs, chapter 7, verses 7 to 9. Despite the ancient imagery, we get the message. Verse 
The story of the Shulamite woman and the lover isn't properly a story, one with a clear narrative line, but a poetic expression of love in all its emotional ups and downs. The songs capture the desire, the anguish, the tension, and the ecstasy of love, but speaks and scenes shift so quickly that it can be difficult to understand. No wonder there have been so many difficult interpretations of the Song of Songs, more than any other book of the Hebrew Scriptures. What makes this portion of scripture even more enigmatic is that it never once mentioned God. But if God has nothing to do with these love songs, how did this material ever make it into the canon of scripture in the first place? The Jews believed the book was not primarily about individual lovers, but about God's love for his people. Israel. Christians initially read it as a parable of Christ's love for the church, and later as a parable of his love for the individual soul. Modern commentators tend to view it more literally as an expression of the sacredness of married life. The fullest expression of love between a man and a woman they praise its inclusion in the Bible because it celebrates the ritual love and the sexual expression of that love. Anyone inclined to believe the Bible teaches a negative view of sex should read this book of scripture before drawing such a conclusion. But who wrote these eloquent love songs? Some say various poets, while others say they were written by Solomon in praise of one of his many wives. Yet others have suggested they were written by a woman, whatever the case. Most admit that the poetry of songs of songs can be understood in more than one way. The story of the Shulamite mysterious as it is, touches our longing to love and be loved. So her life and her times, I hope you enjoy this. The erotic poetry of Song of Songs is not merely an expression of sexual desire, but of romantic, love between a young man and a young woman. The love between the lover and the beloved is not merely one of physical pleasure and intimacy, but one of a depth of feeling and commitment. True love doesn't fade with the changes brought about by time, but it's stronger even than death. Neither the waters of time nor the rivers of disappointment our tragedy can wash it away. Song of Songs, chapter 8, 6 to 7. Most marriages in biblical times were arranged. When children were very Today young... Today is Wednesday, January 17th. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Corva Coleman. Congress is facing a Friday deadline to pass spending legis- For part of the federal government will shut down. President Biden has asked top congressional leaders to the White House. So I'm sorry for this interruption. The news pops up, but I don't. Well, <laughs> that was a little distraction. But anyway, we are back in our romantic love of the the Shulamite woman. Sorry for that. 
Anyway, most marriages in biblical times were arranged when children were very young. Their parents formed alliance to provide wives and husbands for their children. And many of these marriages took place when the participants were young, so young that the rabbis eventually established the minimum age for marriages at 12 for girls and 13 for boys. And that is very young. But not so strange to us, right? There are still countries where we need to understand the culture. And in the Jewish community, it was very important that the community was one part, it was one family, and that it was fruitful. So let's move on with this story that it may, to me it's very interesting that still so many out there cannot understand the Song of Songs. So, more children, even then, romantic and committed love developed over the years of marriage. A couple of months I saw a movie, and it was about Yiddish Jewish families, and also in an arrangement of marriage, but they were older, they were not 12 and 13. So for that woman, she also never felt in the beginning, how is it possible that I ever can love that man? But when it came, she accepted, and she struggled with it in the beginning, but she accepted the arrangements of the parents. And she married him, and she told her fiancé, I don't feel any love for you. But maybe. And her husband also, I mean, after that, told her that, to try it and it worked out it was a documentary of Jewish and Yiddish speaking families so for me it was interesting and if we're honest with ourselves I think it happened in so many other lives where you meet a person and you think ah, that's not going to work out But a bound is a journey that you take on. And what unfolds himself is in that journey where you at last will find your destination. So it's very interesting. And indeed, although not all love, not all marriages were love matches in the beginning. Many arranged marriages were eventually characterized by love. Isaac loved the wife his father's servant had gotten for him. Genesis 24, 67. Akana loved Hannah, a wife he probably received by arrangement with her family. 1 Samuel chapter 1, 8. A beautiful example of the sacrificial love of a husband for his wife is given in Exodus 21, 2-5, where a husband willingly goes into servitude for life rather than leave the wife he loves. A man could, however, choose his own bride even against the desires or arrangements of his parents. Jacob wanted to marry Rachel because he loved her. Genesis 12, 18. 
and got her sister Leah, also as part of the bargain. Samson begged his father to get a young Philistine woman for him, certain she was the right one for him. Judges 14 verse 3. When the Old Testament seems to assume that husbands will love their wives, whether chosen by or for them. The teacher in Ecclesiastes tells husbands to be sure to enjoy life with your wife, whom you love. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 9. As though a husband's love for his wife is a given. The New Testament, however, urges husbands to love their wives for separate and clear times. Ephesians 5, 25 verses and 28 and 33. Then Colossians 3, 19. Paul mentioned that husbands should love their wives, once even comparing that love to the love Christ has for his church. If you have been so fortunate in your own marriage to experience a love, even half as passionate as the one desired in the Song of Songs, read it in light of your story. Thanking God for his blessing. But even if you haven't, you can be glad that marriage love and its sexual expression was God's idea to begin with. You can also read the Songs of Songs as a dialogue between God and your soul. God's love, after all, is more passionate than any human love you could ever experience. He is the true lover of your soul ready to sing with you the greatest and most beautiful song of all. So read Song of Songs chapter 4 verse 9 and chapter 5 verse 1. What picture of marriage love do you get from this passage? When you think about your own marriage or singleness in light of this passage, what thoughts and feelings arise in you? Imagine God having such passion for you. How do you respond? Then read Songs of Songs, chapter 8, 6 to 7. How do these verses express the commitment between the lover and the beloved? What does it take to sustain such a commitment? Throughout history, Intimate love relationships have been shamefully distorted and profound. A Song of Songs gives God's vision of what love relationships were meant to be. What can you do to pursue such a relationship with your husband or your relationships or with God? And then our promises. God doesn't promise a Song of Songs kind of erotic, intimate, early love to everyone. He blesses many marriages with it, but it is not something everyone enjoys. However, He does promise to love His people with the same depth of love described here. And that includes you. You are His treasured one, His beloved, and He delights in you just as these lovers delight in each other. Let me give you some promises in scripture. For you are a people holy to the Lord, your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possessions. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Praise be the Lord. For he showed his wonderful love to me. Psalm 31, verse 21. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Psalm 149, verse 4. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. 
The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Zephania 3 verse 17 The legacy of prayer. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death, its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love, rivers cannot wash it away. If one were to give, all the wealth of his house of love, it wouldn't be utterly scorned. Song of Songs 8, 6 to 8. Beautiful, right? Reflect on Song of Songs chapter 1, 2 to 4, chapter 2, 10 to 13, and chapter 8, 6 to 8. And praise God that nothing can separate us from his love. It's so true. And offer thanks. Always give thanks in every circumstances. God never changes. That Christ's passion has rendered us beautiful in the eyes of God. And confess, I urge you to be good at heart, good at soul and good at mind in your relationship with God and to others. Any failure to believe God truly is the lover of your soul. Confess it that you doubt It can be. And ask God to help you enter into the dialogue of love with him. The Shulamite woman was so captivated by her lover that his name was like perfume that made everything in her world smell good. In biblical times, names actually revealed the person. Knowing someone's name was equivalent to knowing that person, essence. What you could do is light a candle and reflect on one or more of God's names. Look up relevant scripture passages and ask God to reveal himself more deeply to you. Try it. It's your time. Pray with me. Lord, we have placed you as a seal over our heart. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from your love. Amen. May you, if not, get interest in deepened the songs of songs in your life. It's beautiful. And we know there's a lot of misunderstanding, but there will always be someone who criticizes what's okay. Anyway, enjoy it. So, this was the story of the Shulamite woman who was deeply in love. And may the love of Christ also be so deep in your life that passes understanding, even for yourself. And may the God that loves you unconditionally blesses you. And may the Holy Spirit guide you as a journey, as you walk in your destination. This is your pastor, Yeti.
God bless.